Does a diet for diabetes include carbohydrates? If you are a veteran diabetic or have just learned you have the disease, then you must know that to maintain your blood glucose or sugar levels within a very tight range is critical. Without a constant monitoring of this aspect of your life, you can experience a myriad of health problems ranging from mild to potentially fatal, cropping up almost immediately. Despite the onerous implications of this disease, you have for the most part direct control over the situations that can be toxic to you. With applied knowledge, you can live, for all practical purposes, a long and normal life. A critical element you need to know about is carbohydrates. Quite frankly, with the health issues such as obesity abound in our society, I believe everyone should educate themselves about them. This is not to say that they are all bad. As a matter of fact, American and Canadian medical associations recommend that non-diabetic adults should be getting 45% to 65% of their calories from carbs. But if you are diabetic, when it comes to your diet and blood sugar levels, all regular recommendations go right out the window. Our bodies convert all foods into sugar, which is the energy it needs to function. Carbohydrates, which is mostly a combination of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, are a source of this energy. Although carbohydrates are a common source of energy in living organisms, they are not essential nutrients to humans because they are not the building blocks of our molecules. As a matter of fact, we can get our energy entirely from fats and protein. There are simple carbohydrates, such as sugar, found mostly in candy, jams, and desserts, and complex carbohydrates, otherwise known as starch, such as cereals, bread, and pasta. In our general understanding of what carbohydrates are today, we generally refer to simple carbs as sugar and complex carbs as starches. Diabetic diet pioneer Dr. Bernstein, born in 1934 and a type 1 diabetic, is a living testimony to a long, normal, and productive life. In 1969, he discovered that by monitoring and balancing his food and insulin intake, he could regulate his blood glucose levels to within normal levels 24-7, a revolutionary, life-enhancing, and life-saving development for diabetics. He discovered at the time that carbohydrates were the biggest contributors to the spiking in his sugar levels. Although carbohydrates can be regulated by insulin, an increase of both of them creates an unpredictable sway in blood sugar levels. Dr. Bernstein has written many books and has outlined the types of foods you should avoid and should indulge in. He advocates a low-carbohydrate diet. However, you can have some, in some instances, in limited quantities. For a list of foods recommended and not recommended, go to www.dietfordiabetes.ca. That's www.dietfordiabetes.ca. Uh, there's a link for that somewhere on this page. Uh, go ahead and click on that and enjoy the information. Thanks for listening and have a wonderful, healthy day.